My brothers and sisters, the affair of sadness and grief and worry and distress is something that afflicts all of us. There is not one of us except that he is afflicted by these hardships. These hardships that affect the heart and affect the soul. Sometimes this grief and worry makes a person feel miserable. And they feel down. And sometimes the term depression can be used in a situation where a person has gone to far extremes with regard to his sadness and his worry. Such that he cannot function normally due to that sadness. The pleasure of his life is spoiled due to anxiety and worry. Yet alongside that, a believer, he knows that this is something that will occur as a course of his life. And he also knows that worry and sadness is something that is an expiation of his sins. And it is a means of raising his level before his Lord. As hard as his worry may seem, he knows that there are positive outcomes. If he is patient, if he is truthful, if he is obedient and fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the most beneficial of those outcomes is that he is encouraged because of that which he is going through. That he is encouraged to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to humble himself before Allah to complain of his suffering to Allah to make dua and, and beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of this brings to a believer a sense of nearness to Allah in a manner that is indescribable that a person recognizes that he has reached a state in his life he has reached that point and that stage whereby only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice him. So he realizes, he opens his eyes and he recognizes that that which he has been suffering, that he should have turned to Allah right at the outset. Then when he turns to Allah and he humbles himself and he beseeches Allah and he complains unto Allah, and he turns to Allah seeking his protection and his guidance, then that comfort and that tranquility comes upon him. A feeling, my brothers and sisters, of nearness to Allah that cannot be described. Likewise, the fact that the believer endures this distress and he feels that the pleasures of this world, that he can't really taste them. Because he's worried about the grief that has overtaken him. So when he realizes that as a believer, he puts the dunya in its place. He realizes that the dunya is insignificant. And that he should depend upon Allah and rely upon him. And he should look towards the hereafter because the hereafter is everlasting. He turns to Allah in hope, with certainty, free from worry and distress because he knows that whatever worry he's facing now, there will be no worry in the hereafter. There will be no distress in the hereafter, there will be no sadness in the hereafter. The one who receives salvation from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated, وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَذْهَبَ عَنَّا الْهَزْنَةِ إِنَّ رَبَّنَا لَغَفُورٌ شَكُورٌ That they will say in paradise, the believers, they will say, praise be to Allah, who has removed us from all sorrow. Indeed, our Lord is oft forgiving and appreciative. The Lord, who out of His grace, 
has lodged us and has placed us in a home that will last forever. A home meaning paradise where the believers will not be touched by toil or by trouble nor by weariness. How tremendous, my brothers and sisters, is this reward for the one who understands the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind those hardships and those masaib, those afflictions that befall a person. And he realizes that this is something that, will go through, that he will go through naturally throughout his life. So the following, my brothers and sisters, are some points that help a person understand distress and sadness and worry. And also those affairs that will take a person away from that sadness and worry by giving him tranquility. The first of those things, my brothers and sisters, that we need to understand that so long as a person has iman and he is righteous, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to reward him and write down for him his good deeds. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stated, and whomever does righteousness, whether male or female, whilst they are believers, we shall surely grant them and cause them to, give, to live a good life. And we will surely give them their reward in the hereafter. According to the best of that which they used to do. So righteousness is rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Male and female. Whilst you are a mu'min. He will give them a good life. And reward them in the hereafter. So this is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the one who believes and does good deeds that Allah will grant him a happy life. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said with regard to the attitude of the believer that the believer who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly أَجَبًا لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ لَهُ خَيْرٌ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ لِأَهَدٍ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ إِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ السَّرَّاءُ شَكَرْ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ الدَّرَّاءُ سَبَرًا فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ That truly amazing is the affair of the believer. Indeed all of his affairs are good and that goodness is not for anyone except a believer. If something good happens to him, he is grateful and that is good for him. And if something of affliction befalls him, then he is patient and that is good for him. So the believer has this attitude that all of the affairs that afflict him, they are khair. Whether it be hardship or whether it be ease, if it is hardship, he's patient. If it is good, then he is grateful. So the Muslim, he rejoices when he attains the great and abundant goodness. He rejoices. Because he knows that all of this is a reward in the hereafter from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the second point. And that is that a Muslim... He will rejoice Yawm Al-Qiyamah because of the recompense that he receives from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he was sure of the reward from Allah for the believers who suffer grief and sadness. Bukhari and Muslim, they report from Abu Huraira that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No trouble, no fatigue, no sorrow, no sadness. No hurt, no distress befalls a Muslim. Even if it were a prick that he receives from a thorn, except that Allah expi expiates some of that from his sins. Or well, due to that, his sins are expiated. Likewise, the statement 
of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A Muslim is not hurt by a thorn that pricks him. Nor what is more than that. Except that Allah raises his rank because of that hurt and wipes out his sins. So a Muslim knows that whatever he feels of worry and distress is an expiation for his sins. An increase in reward. One of the Salaf, he said, were it not for the afflictions, we would surely find ourselves bankrupt on the day of resurrection. Another one of the Salaf, that he used to rejoice when he was afflicted, just as one of us rejoices in a time of well-being and prosperity. That's how they used to see affliction. The third affair, is being acquainted with the reality of this world. Knowing that this world will come to an end. Its pleasure is short-lived. And what, and what remains in front of us of the delights of this world, then they are not pure, my brothers and sisters. It is not always continual goodness and happiness and joy. There is no pure pleasure and delight in this world for anyone. There is no continuity. You laugh a little and then you cry. If you are happy sometimes, then you are sad more than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ And so are the days. Meaning some good and some not so good. And we give to men by turns that Allah may test those who believe. These are the days, my brothers and sisters. Some good, some not so good. They come in turns. So there will be times of goodness and times of hardship. So one day is for you and you are happy. The next day is against you and you are in sadness and grief. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said that this world is a sijan for the mu'min. That this dunya, sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. This world is a prison for the believer and a paradise for the unbeliever. So the believer he knows that there will come hardship and sorrow and grief and sadness. He realizes that. Because this world, it encompasses him. It confines him. He feels confined. So this world is a place of fatigue and toil, illness and hurt and grief and sorrow. It is a place of distress and worry. That is why the believer who is patient and pious leaves this world to the place of comfort and tranquility and everlasting life. Bukhari and Muslim report from Abu Qatada radiallahu anhu that he said, whenever a funeral passed before the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would say, either he finds relief or the people are given relief from him. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they said, who is the one who is given relief? And who are the ones who are given relief from him? So he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a believing servant is given relief from the troubles of this world. And in the death of a wicked person, the people, the townships, the trees, and even the animals are given relief from him. So this hadith shows the reality of this world and shows him that the afflictions and the sorrow and the worry are the normal state of affairs in this life. And this grief and this worry are a test of his patience and a test of his obedience to Allah. So upon the mu'min is to remain steadfast, to trust in Allah and depend upon him. And not give up hope in the one who has been merciful to the believers. 
The fourth affair is that focusing upon this world and its worries and just being overcome and allowing your life to be driven by the worries and the sadness and the grief of this dunya causes disarray in the soul, disorder in one's worldly affairs. But for the believing servant in the face of afflictions who makes the hereafter, the akhirah, his goal, he makes the akhirah his purpose, then Allah will put his affairs in order and strengthen his resolve. Anas radiallahu anhu reported that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever makes the akhirah his ham, he makes the akhirah his goal. Man kanat, man kanat akhiratu hammahu, the one who makes, looks towards the hereafter, and he makes it the purpose of his life. Then Allah will make rich his heart. Allah will put order in his affairs. And the world comes to him, whether it wants to or not. And whomsoever makes the world his goal, then Allah puts poverty right before his eyes. And places disorder in his affairs. And the world will not come to him. Except that which has already been decreed for him. The hadith collected by Imam Tirmidhi. Authenticated by Al-Albani rahimahullah. So that is the affair in reality my brothers and sisters. That no matter what sadness or what afflicts you. What worry or stress overcomes you. That you look towards the akhirah. That you hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know that the reward is certain for the one who is righteous, for the one who is pious, the one who is patient, the one who takes care of his affairs and he is not overcome such that he doesn't do anything of obedience because he's so overcome by the worry and stress that he's under. So you find people even instead of coming closer to Allah in times of worry, they flee from ibadah. I'm too stressed to pray, they say. I'm too busy with my worry to read the Quran, they say. This, my brothers and sisters, is a fleeing from Allah and fleeing from the reward of Allah. And this only gathers for you more harm. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who are patient and righteous and obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in times of ease and in times of adversity. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala shrafil mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een amma ba'd. The fifth affair, my brothers and sisters, to relieve. So if you look at the previous affairs, they are putting your worry and your hardship and your stress and your sadness into context. That this world is short, it will come to an end, so make your goal the hereafter. Put it into context that this life is not purely a life of delights and hardships are something that will occur. Afflictions, sadness, worry, grief. It is something that is the normal state of affairs. A day that is good and a day that is difficult. That one puts things into context and he makes his goal the hereafter. Because this life will soon come to an end. The fifth affair is the affair of dua. Of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is without doubt a cure. For worry and sadness and grief. To alleviate your difficulties, call upon Allah. And Allah will come to your aid. And He will relieve you of your hardships. Just as He has said, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ إِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ 
أجيب دعوة داعي إذا دعاني فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لألهم يرشدون That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that when my servant asks you concerning me, when my servant asks you, O Prophet, concerning me, فَإِنِّي قريب. Indeed, I am close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ دَعِي إِذَا دَعَانِي I respond to the invocation of the one who makes dua when he calls upon me. So let them respond to me. Meaning, let them respond in obedience to me and believe in me that they may be rightly guided. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those times of hardship that He opens up our chests and that He makes easy our affair, makes easy the tasks that we have to face. Dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from these afflictions. That's the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anas ibn Maliki mentioned that I used to serve Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I used to serve him. And I would often hear him saying, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al وَالْحَزْنِ وَالْعَجْزِ وَالْكَسْلِ وَالْكَسَلِ وَالْبُخْلِ وَالْجُبْنِ وَدَلَعِ الدَّيْنِ وَغَلَبَةِ الرِّجَالِ That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to often make this dua. Oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from distress and sorrow, from helplessness and laziness. From miserliness, from miserlinessness, and from cowardice, from being miserly, and from cowardice, from being heavily indebted to others, and from being overcome by men. The Hadith in Bukhari. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to seek from Allah His mercy. Allahumma rahmata, rahmataka. Arju, oh Allah, it is your mercy that I hope for. That's what the Prophet Wasallam used to say. And he used to continue, فَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَى نَفْسِ تَرْفَةَ عَيْنٍ And do not abandon me, O oh Allah, to myself, not even for the instant of the blinking of an eye. وَأَسْلِحْ لِي شَأْنِي كُلَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتْ He used to say, And O oh Allah, put all my affairs in good order for me. For there is no deity, and there is no God worthy of worship other than you. So when a believing servant calls upon Allah, sincerely from his heart, Truthfully desiring that which he is asking for from Allah and he is obedient to Allah, then Allah will give to him that which he asks for. Sixthly, that he trusts in Allah. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا And whomsoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, then Allah will make, make a way out for him from every difficulty. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ and Allah will provide for him from sources that he could never imagine. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And whomsoever puts his trust in Allah, then Allah will suffice him. Meaning that Allah will suffice him against harm and grief and sorrow in this life and the next life. So the means of bringing relief to sorrow and distress are numerous as you can see. And a person should seek them out. Through the recitation of the Qur'an, he comes close to Allah. With the dhikr of Allah and plentiful supplication alongside trust and reliance and obedience to Allah, he comes close to Allah. And in this, in this a person 
fights it finds illumination of the heart ease and comfort in the soul alladhina amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikrillah those who believe and those who find rest in the remembrance of allah ala bi dhikrillah tatma'innu qulub verily is it not in the remembrance of allah that they find rest it is in the dhikr of allah in times of hardship in times of ease in times of calamity in times of worry distress stress sadness you don't move away from the dhikr of allah you don't turn away from dua and supplication rather you increase these are the cures my brothers and sisters from sadness and worry and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the fitna and the hardships and the tribulations of this dunya and the worries and the sadness and to focus our hearts upon the hereafter for in the hereafter that is the life that is everlasting and that is the life that is free from worry and this is what we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for walhamdulillahirabbil alamin wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina muhammad 